Whenever I see a film written by Shuhi Fujisawa, I just like to mention just how great of a writer he is. At River's Edge, Love and Honor, The Twilight Samurai, The Hidden Blade, these are all excellent films and among my most favorite movies of all time. I mean, yeah, the director and the actor is a big part of a film being good, but a lot of times it does come down to a good writer. Fujisawa just has this way of just slowly getting you invested in the characters and the drama, and then he hits you with this amazing twist and something big at the end. The only one that didn't quite impact me as much was probably Yamazakura, but now I've finally seen Sword of Desperation, and it is everything I want from a Shuhi Fujisawa film. And that's saying a lot. It's a human drama with samurai, and it just slowly progresses, and then it just nails you with this amazing twist at the end. And this one may be the best twist of them all. So the Sword of Desperation released in 2010, and for some reason I completely missed it. In fact, I never really heard about it until like a month ago, and I still don't know why that is. But I could definitely see why people mention this, especially during my video of the top 10 samurai duels in movies. And I do feel really stupid for not including this film, because it really does have one of the best duels in samurai films. But I don't want to mention too much about that fight because it is a spoiler and I feel like it has a lot of impact kind of going into this film not expecting it. And to be honest this film is pretty slow paced. There's a lot of flashbacks and I feel like if you're not really paying attention you might lose track of what's a flashback and what isn't and that can kind of impact your enjoyment of this film. And then you'd probably see the ending and then forget about all that and just say this film is amazing because it really is. It, this ending makes this film so much better. This video is actually a Patreon request. So shout out to the Nerdy Ronin. He's actually got a YouTube channel, he reviews a lot of great samurai films, so be sure to check his channel out. Also, if you want to have first choice in choosing the next video, be sure to check out my Patreon. I just added some new tiers, so be sure to check that out. For the most part, this story is pretty simple to follow. A local lord of a small clan is taken by the charm of this mistress named Renko, and she is the definition of an awful human being. Do you remember that time when you had a friend who was probably a good friend and he was dating a crazy evil woman and he was just hypnotized by her and for some reason oblivious to the fact that she was making everyone around her miserable, including you, and she was in fact so bad that some of your friends killed themselves because of that. And that's basically Ranko. And in this story, she's just performing unspeakable acts of cruelty to the members of this clan. And it ends up taking the main character, whose name is Sun Zyman. He's a low-level samurai in the clan. And he's the one that ends up putting an end to her madness. He decides that just talking to her is not going to be enough. He has to shank her. It's the only way. And he straight up murders her. And this is all shown in the first few minutes of the film. And then the rest of the film you're just kind of putting pieces together trying to figure out why he did this. And then it gets more involved. So by him killing her, he's committed two cardinal sins that samurai should never do. One is to never draw your sword within the castle ground. And the other, of course, is to not use it against the lord's mistress. He immediately surrenders himself, and he expects to be beheaded. But for some reason, the verdict just gives him house arrest for one year and a reduction of salary. 
it's a mere slap on the wrist compared to the crime that he's committed and what he deserves. But like a true samurai, he locks himself up in a storage shed and then just spends an entire year of self-imposed imprisonment with the only contact in the world being his dead wife's niece, Ryo. And she really is great to him. She takes care of him, she feeds him, she bathes him. The last one's kind of weird. Yodaro. And after the year is up, he's now a free man, and he's permitted to serve the Lord again. And two years later, he is called by the elder of the clan, Minbu Suda. And now he's told that he's being promoted to the rank of the Lord's head personal attendant. And now his salary is going to go back to what it was before he killed the mistress. And just confused by the whole thing, he asks Minbu why would he be promoted to such a position after all he's done. And Minbu just answers that the Lord has regretted his past behavior and he's heard about the stoic ways in which Sunzaiman has performed his house arrest, and he's pleased by his act. The Lord believes that such material should not be wasted, and he's got a much more important role for him. It then gets really interesting. Minbu then just asks him that he's heard that he's been a master swordsman, and his style has an invincible move called the Sword of Desperation. The title of the film, so you know it's going to be used at some point, and you know it's going to be awesome. Since Simon then explains that when a man uses it, he has to be near dead. And none of us know what that means yet, but it comes into play later. So, I just want to say that a lot of the enjoyment you get from this film is just in how shocking the ending is. So really, for those that haven't seen it yet, I'm just going to tell you that it's a great film. It actually reminded me a lot of Hurakiri. There's something in it that's similar. It also has that same kind of message, but a bit more hopeful. The only flaws that I could really think of is just it's really slowly paced in the beginning. And there's a lot of storytelling with flashbacks, and I could see it confusing a lot of people. There's also a love story, but I'm very iffy about it. It's kind of weird. It's kind of on the edge, I'll say. But if you like the style of Twilight Samurai and other Fujisawa films, then I think you will love this film. So go check it out. Anyway, now I'm gonna get into the spoilers, so please leave if you haven't seen this yet, because the ending in this film is everything. More so the surprise of it. So I don't want this spoiled for anyone. So basically what happens next in the story is the daimyo's stepbrother has been very critical of the way the clan has been mismanaged since the days of Lady Renko. And just his anger towards the Lord is getting heated up. The plan all along was to use St. Simon's sword skills against this guy and he is also known for his skills. But they think that St. Simon could use his sword of desperation on him to kill him. Meanwhile, since Simon is just trying to match make Ryo with a younger samurai, Ryo is divorced, but since Simon wishes for her to have a new start, she refuses, but he tells her that woman's happiness is in marriage. In reply, she answers that she's been married before and she was not happy with it. She then wishes to stay there and serve him, but then we find out that Ryo is actually secretly in love with Sun Simon. And I honestly was really confused by this revelation because isn't he her uncle? At least in the subs that I have in the Blu-ray, she's calling him uncle and there's a love scene with them, so it's really weird. I mean, it was weird that they were bathing together. That was like the first thing, but now this is, yeah. But when I asked someone about this, they said that he's apparently the step-uncle. So I guess step-uncle sounds a little better. I mean, I guess they're not really related, so it's okay. If you know more about this, please let me know in the comments, because I'm still a little confused why the subs are calling him uncle. Eventually, 
Obia storms the castle alone, and so Zyman, sensing danger, tells the Lord to flee, and he goes to face Obia in this absolute awesome duel. I was just kind of sitting there angry that I did not put this on my top 10 Samurai Duels video that I just did. I really should have watched this one sooner, but no one was talking about it until the video was out. The way the fight is done is just so excitingly. There's no camera cuts. With each exchange, you're holding your breath. You can see everything. Eventually it ends in this absolutely bloody finish. I loved it. And when you're seeing all this, it's really shocking because the rest of the film was very tame and quiet and now there's like blood everywhere. And now comes the interesting part of the movie and this is the big twist. After the sword fight and since Simon wins, suddenly he's accused to have gone mad and killed the Lord Obia without permission and he did this all out of the blue. The Lord wants to get rid of him and he orders for him to die and now he's finally gonna get his revenge for killing his beloved mistress Lady Renko. This is all just a setup from the beginning. Basically they're killing two birds with one stone. Senzaiman fights like a maniac against an army of bodyguards, slowly getting attacked but still fighting to the very end, until it seems like he is killed. They declare him dead. <laughs> But then suddenly he rises up one last time and uses his sword of desperation technique and he uses it to kill the traitor Minbu, one of the Lord's councilmen and he does this all with one last breath and then dies. And it's sad because one of the last scenes is Ryu waiting for her uncle to return and he never does because you know, obviously he's dead and the whole thing really is just bittersweet. So now let's talk about the positive points. First of all, this movie is just beautiful to look at. There's great fights, there's great scenery, landscapes, I love it. The director had an eye for just detail. I really just love the fights in this movie, especially the second fight. You just watch since I'm in, in this slow and painful battle that he can only lose. It's also really interesting that in the fight, he's not shown as a brilliant fighter, but just as a despaired man that is just trying to survive at all costs. And what kind of makes it better and less bittersweet is that in the end he tricks the councilman with his sort of desperation technique and he just takes him out with him. I love that. Overall, I think this was a very well-made movie and I think it's for sure one of the more better modern samurai films. And hopefully it makes my list of top 10 samurai films of the 21st century. That's a video I'm going to come out with soon. I don't think it's my favorite Shuhi Fujisawa film. I think that one is still at river's edge. But it is close and it's up there. Anyway, thanks for watching and if you've made it this far in the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to check out my Patreon, I have a link for that in the description below. I just added some great tiers that you could join, hopefully you check them out. Thanks for watching.